this is Christine. Thanks so much for tuning into my Mostly Keto Kitchen today. So today I'm going to give you my two cents on the Game Changers movie. So from my perspective, having a PhD in biochemistry and doing lots of research in the nutrition world, I think it's nutrition propaganda, all right? I think it's very biased. So what is propaganda? Here's a definition. It's information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. And so I think that's what's going on in this movie. It's a compelling movie. When I got to the end of it, I was like, wow, you know, maybe I should eat less meat or, you know, I, it, it, you, wanna, you wanna do it. And I, I wanna be vegan. Like, I would love to be vegan. It seems great, right? You know, you're not hurting animals. You're just eating plants. It seems light and healthy. It just seems good. But if we look at the science behind it, it's not good for everybody. And that's the part that really bothers me the most about the movie is that they show you these cameos of these amazing athletes or who are doing amazing things on a vegan diet. And that's great. I love it. And there's a whole portion of the population that can do exactly the same. But there is also a portion of the population for whom a vegan diet is not appropriate. And it's unfair to try and push that particular perspective on the people that it's not good for. So um, there are three things that I wanna talk about in regards to the movie. The first one is recognizing bias. And so this is an important part of being scientifically literate. And it's why it's so important that we support our teachers and we support kids taking science classes because the population, the public, we do need to have a certain level of understanding of science so that we can recognize bias. So the first place where I saw bias in the movie was at minute 25, and that's when the football players are having um, different meals and then there's a doctor that's looking at their blood samples. And if you listen to the language that's used, you can see the bias. So for example, the doctor says, nice and clear. That's how he calls the vegetarian guy's serum, the plasma, uh, nice and clear. And then when they look at the other ones who had had some meat, theirs was cloudy. So assuming that there was some fat in the meat protein or in the meat that ended up making the, the plasma uh, cl cloudy. And the way the language they used there was cloudy, which doesn't seem nice, right? We always prefer to have like a, a clear day instead of a cloudy day. But also one of the guys said, ooh, that's kind of gross. So that's so unscientific. You know, who's that guy? He's a football player and he's telling you it's gross. No, having some, um, having some fat traveling through your blood after a meal is normal, right? How's that fat gonna get to your cells? It has to be in there and it goes in those big droplets, those LDL, HDL particles. And so um, it should make sense that that is cloudy. Now, if it stays cloudy, it's always cloudy, it's really cloudy, um, and it doesn't ever clear out, then that would be an issue, but that's not what's going on post meal. So that's an example of bias. Also around minute 46, there's a scientist, a geneticist, his name is Dr. Mark Thomas. He just outright makes an, an incorrect statement. He says that glucose is the only thing that the brain takes up for energy. And that's not true. Uh, the brain does great on ketones also. Now there are some cells that need glucose in particular, an absolute requirement for glucose, right? But there's a whole bunch of brain cells that do great on ketones. And there's a lot of research out there these days. I'll put a reference in the, in the text here, indicating that there, um, people with, as they age, they do better if they've got some ketones in their blood because the brain benefits from those ketones. So it's, he's just not right. And um, the other thing to keep in mind, remember those brain cells that do need glucose, the reason why glucose is so important, or sorry, glucose is so important, and what our bodies do to deal with that is that we make our own glucose, right? Gluconeogenesis is making glucose. So the body is not going to, I mean, we didn't evolve taking the chance that we might not be able to eat enough glucose. We make it ourselves. So anyway, I, you know, that was just plain wrong, and maybe if you don't have a science background, you wouldn't catch that, but um, uh, I, I really didn't care for that too much. So um, number two here, if they were actually trying to do a public service, okay, and create a nutritional movie that was really going to benefit people, then they would have talked about carb sensitivity. Many vegan diets are very high in carbs, right? A lot of beans, a lot of tortillas, especially in this movie. Um, it's, you know, it's a fairly carb heavy diet in general. Now it's not that you can't have sort of a ketogenic vegan diet, but it, it's not that easy. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a lot of the population that's struggling with carbohydrates. And because of that, 
um, that kind of diet wouldn't be good for them. It just spikes their insulin too much. Remember, insulin's that storage hormone, and so it just makes them get fatter. So carb-sensitive people, vegan, maybe possible, but you'd have to really think about it. Now, the other thing is autoimmune issues. So there are a lot of people out there that have wheat sensitivities and also soy and, um, let's see here, and nuts, those would be top three. And those are the ones that I'm probably most sensitive with my Hashimoto's. Um, but, uh, you know, a vegan diet and also with beans, I mean, I don't know, beans can kind of bloat people. I don't know if you really call it an autoimmune reaction, but um, some of those foods are not great for people with autoimmune diseases. And so, you know, I don't, my last point really, get off the junk food, that's the main thing. But otherwise, let people who want to have a whole food diet, let people pick and choose what they want to eat. If they want to be more carb oriented, fine, do that. Or if you want to be vegan, fine, do that. But for the people that feel better when they eat meat or they eat more fat, let them do that too. So don't take this movie to be true science. It's promoting the vegan diet, which is fine, but I, I just wish that they would say so and not cloak it in that aura of science, making it seem like it was, you know, that's the one and only way to go. So now you might say, oh, but Christine, you have your mostly keto kitchen. And so aren't you promoting the keto diet? And I think that's fair to note, but what I'm trying to do is raise awareness around the biochemistry of ketosis. It's something that's been missing. We haven't talked about it. It's not taught the way it should be in biochemistry courses in medical schools. And it's something that's been with us all through evolution. And it's just because we have been so carb focused that it's just a way for us to rebalance and look back and say, oh, there is this other way. What I promote, eat, eat a wide variety of healthy foods. I'm not crazy about the way that I eat. Check my Instagram out today. I put toast on it. So, um, but having some ketones in your blood can help stave off um, that hunger that you might feel between meals. And so for me, it's worked great. And I don't even, when I coach people, I am not in any way promoting ketogenesis. If people want the information, I'm happy to give it. But if, you know, however people want to go about it, I just think the main thing is just getting off the junk food. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in.